Welcome back my dear friends to the next video related to teaching aptitude in the competitive exams. Myself Prashant Dhanbagal. If you are watching my video for the first time, kindly subscribe my channel. Don't forget to share this video with your friends. Today, my dear friends, I would like to summarize within few minutes the concepts of education, psychology and philosophy. The foundations of psychology and the philosophy in education. My dear friends, don't forget to watch this video up to the end. Definitely it will be helpful for your competitive exams like UGC, NET, KBS, then SET, CET, that type of all competitive exams you can attend including CUET also. So my dear friends, today I would like to summarize what is the concept of psychological foundations of education. The different concepts of psychological foundations of education. It includes the concept of what is educational psychology, the learning theories, individual difference, the concept of intellectual development and theories, and the concept of guidance and counseling. First of all, I would like to move to the different branches of psychology. You know the different branches of psychology, general psychology and applied psychology. And in general psychology, it includes the animal psychology, child psychology, social psychology, physiological psychology, abnormal psychology. And the applied part of psychology include industrial psychology, crime psychology, or we can say criminal psychology, then clinical psychology, occupational psychology, the atmosphere, which is psychology related to working atmosphere, then educational psychology. Those who are writing exam for the educational psychology, you can think more about and you can watch the video up to the end. Definitely it will be a plus for all of you. What is educational psychology? It's very simple. Study the behavior, human behavior from the prenatal stage up to the adulthood. You know, the study part related to human behavior is educational psychology. Nowadays it is more important for the learners. So, kindly keep in mind a small statement, the educational psychology is the study of all the aspects of human behavior from the infancy to adulthood, prenatal stage to the adulthood, also we can see. And moving to the next topic, the different learning theories, learning theories, kindly keep in mind, behaviorist theories is there, cognitive, cognitive psychologists given a lot of contribution, social theory is also there. First of all, what is the different behavior, behaviorist theory is coming. It is first of all the best contribution by Pavlov's classical condition, Pavlov. Then Thorndike's theory of trial and error, Skinner's operant conditioning. This is maximum importance given for the study of behavior. Then cognitive studies means the cognitive structure of mind. The theory is contributed by gestalt theory of learning. Levin's field theory. Please remember all these things are important. Who contributed this theory is the question that we will ask in the exam. Piaget's cognitive learning theory, Brunet's cognitive assumption, Oswald's meaningful verbal learning, then the social learning theories. It includes social learning theory of Bandura and Walters, then Vygotsky's social constructivism, but one of the important prominent theory in the present era. Moving to the next topic, please remember the authors, the founders, the propounders of all these theories. First one, Pavlov's classical conditioning, what you have to remember it is, Pavlov is a Russian psychologist and he is Nobel Prize winner also, psychological Nobel Prize winner also. So as per his concept, it is possible to induce fear as well as remove fear in a child through the conditioning. Conditioning means modification of the behavior of the students, the learners and uh, this theory is helping maximum for conditioning, creating good habits in the mind of students, making teaching and learning more effective and helps for increasing the interest, positive attitudes of the students. That is Pavlov's classical conditioning. And uh, next one, it is very, very important one and uh, you have to remember the theory, the contribution of thought text, trial and error. The connectivism, the concept of connectivism is put forwarded by Thorndike. That is very important, you have to keep in mind. And you can see the laws contributed by Thorndike also. The law of readiness, law of effect, law of exercise. All these things are related to the theory of trial and error. 
so please remember who is the proponent of this theory and uh, next one you have to keep in mind uh, that also related to the same area behaviorist theory skinner's operant conditioning operant conditioning is contributed by skinner and you know bloom's taxonomy also the contribution one of the contribution from that concept also and is important points you have to keep in mind operant behavior and the respondent behavior is very much needed and uh, through the different experience of hungry right and pg i think you are remembering and through that uh, theory that contribution that experiment uh, we found that operant condition is very much possible through the uh, different uh, actions and it's important for the molding of behavior also and another important theory is just start the theory of learning and just start is that just a psychologist it includes people like uh, max wathimer fulvo kofler kurt lewin kurt kofka like that personality is contributed just at the theory of learning and uh, it is from the german word it means the whole the all round development learning by each side it is also contributed by just at psychologist please remember that keywords and according to the just at learning theory what step should be a teacher have to take to facilitate the inside learning in these students and it will be through the problem solving situations created by the teacher students will create an insight that will keep a long lasting memory in the students so kindly remember the contribution by just start groups then comes the levin's field theory and here we are learning the different the psychological concept the importance of learning environment how we can create that look at that the psychological environment is called life space contribution by lovin and the learning is a behavioral change it's not simply filling the uh, mind it's changing the behavior and a locomotion from one region of life space to another definitely there will be after learning there will be lot of changes in the mind of human behavior that is through the change in field and forces that will help him to move towards the goal are the driving forces for the best behavior in student that is the best contribution by levin's field theory please remember that another one it is piaget piaget you know very well cognitive structure it is one of the best contribution by him and according to him the development of a person's mind behavior is classified into four stages sensory motor stage pre operational stage concrete operational stage and a formal operational stage if you are googling you will get what is the age duration of sensory motor stage pre operational stage concrete operational stage and a formal operational stage all these things it will help you another important contribution by bruner look at the jerome s bruner an american psychologist his famous book is the process of education and he recommends learning by inductive reasoning inductive reasoning and he gives three important modes of representation that is inactive iconic and symbolic the change in behavior is happening through these three representations and he recommends spiral curriculum that will help the learner with a continuation you know the approach of spiral there will be a continuation for the learning of present with the past and another important contribution by ospel ospel's theory it's very important and uh, verbal learning by suppressing or avoiding rot learning the things what the students are learning should be verbal not he promotes meaningful verbal learning and the suppresses rot learning always students are learning like that the immediate response from the students only through the uh, rot learning not from the meaningful verbal learning and ospel propounds the concept of meaningful verbal learning kindly keep in mind it's very important and uh, the development of meaning verbal meaningful verbal learning he organized the model teaching model it is called advanced organizer model that also another important question you can face in the exam who is the proponent of advanced organizer model of teaching it is by osbel please remember osbel's theory of meaningful verbal learning here comes the last theory why goes key is social constructivism you can keep in mind constructivism that propounds helps the learner to learn by doing and here why goes key suggests students should learn through the social interaction and he developed for that he developed the model of teaching 
social constructivism. There, there will be on concept zone of proximal development and you know there will be every time a gap between the level of actual development and the, the level of potential development. That can be filled through the zone of proximal development, the help given by the teacher. In that zone, teacher can give the scaffolding, not only teacher, adult, peers, experts, even the mass media, social media, internet. Nowadays, all their things are scaffolding. So, uh, Vygotsky propounded the theory of social uh, constructivism and students are learning through the social interaction. My dear friends, this is another important concept related to psychology, individual difference, individual difference. So, the individual difference, you know, every time there will be a difference between individual in their taste. Those who are having same taste will create groups. So, what are the different areas of individual difference? You can see the points, physical difference, emotional difference, difference in intellectual area, difference in the social and moral aspects difference in aptitude, interest, beliefs, attitudes. So all these important attributes, criteria create an individual difference. Moving to another important area, intelligence. Here is the list of theories propounded in related to intelligence, the concept of intelligence. You can remember the theory as well as the others. Unitary theory or monarchic theory, multi-factor theory or anarchic theory by Thorndike. Here Thorndike, then two-factor theory of Spearman, group-factor theory of Thurston, and important one, Guilford contributed the structure of intelligence. All these theories are very important. You please remember what is the concept and also who are the propounders of all these theories. It's very important and uh, moving to the best contribution, everlasting contribution by multiple intelligence put forward. The theory put forward by Howard Garner. So, as per his view, the intelligence is multiple in human mind. Some people will be more important giving for the verbal, visual, spatial intelligence like that. So, he classified the intelligence in human mind through all these the, uh, the different categories like uh, visual or spatial intelligence, verbal or linguistic intelligence, logical or mathematical intelligence, then bodily or kinesthetic intelligence, musical or rhythmic intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, intrapersonal intelligence, naturalistic intelligence. This is the last one put forward by Howard Gardner. So kindly keep in mind, in a human mind there are multiple intelligence. Those who are molding this intelligence will become more efficient intellectual persons in doing some activities. Some are intelligent in doing uh, sports related activity. Some are in they are showing their ability in craft related area, painting, dancing like that. Some are more important in technical. So all the uh, theories of that multiple intelligence helps for the development of a human behavior. And uh, here comes the last topic in psychology that is guidance and uh, counseling. You please remember guidance, it is a process through which a person is getting a support from others that will help for molding his character. Types of guidance when we look at that educational guidance is there, vocational guidance is there, personal guidance is there. Counseling there will be series of direct contact between the individual who are meeting together. It will help for changing the attitude or behavior of the person. Guidance is sometimes only happening but counseling is a continuous process. It helps for the meet them. There will be a person who is giving counseling for the for a particular person, they will meet together and uh, through the continuous interaction, discussion, data collection process, analysis, all that things, behavior is changed. Then, types of counseling include direct counseling, non-direct counseling and uh, electric, eclectic counseling. So, my dear friends, this is the summarized view regarding the theoretical aspects of uh, educational psychology. Next to what I would like to show, the concept of educational philosophy. You know, philosophical foundations of education is a vast area. So you have to watch the entire section up to the end of the video. Kindly don't forget to share this video with your friends also.